Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be showing you how to take your bare installed cat head and turn it into this a fully assembled and adjusted head all the way to the valve cover on. So what we're working on here is a C13. This is actually a Regen C13 with an LEE serial number prefix. And there's a difference between those and the KCB, the older ones. And first thing to show you is I've got it at TDC on number one already. I know that because I had to do the camshaft on this one. Uh, if you notice, the head's been installed and torqued. No injectors are installed. The injector boards are empty, clean, and ready to go. There's our injectors. Well, actually, those are boxes, but injectors are in the boxes. These are our LEE style injectors. They have the four prong because they're dual solenoid injectors. Now, a lot of people will send me these numbers here. Those are not your injector trim codes. Those numbers are on top on these style injectors. Anytime you're gonna be looking for your injector trim codes, you're looking for this, a 12 digit code. And with a 12 digit code, you're also on the right there, you see a 2048, that's your confirmation code. You need both of those numbers. You don't need the part number or anything else. Now you always wanna lubricate your O-rings before installing them. Some people say you should not, or you don't need to lubricate the bottom one. I always do. It seems to help keep the O-ring on as well. I have seen them fall off. And you're gonna install your hold down bracket. You can't install the hold down bracket after. You have to install it when you're installing your injector. I know some using this kind of, kind of, I guess you'd say restaurant style oil applicator. It is the way to go, folks. The older style squirt cans are a pain in the butt. Now what I've done is I've lubricated the injector bore also already with oil, just a little bit, mostly at the top. You wanna do that both on the O-rings and the injector bore to make sure it seats easily and doesn't roll or cut the O-ring. Now, as you can see, I'm very gentle in installing it. I'm trying not to knock that lower O-ring off or nick one of the o-rings you don't want to do that now you always want to new use new injector hold down bolts i always lubricate under the head and the threads and then i install it hand tight and then what we're going to do after that is just torque them now depending on the engine a lot of the c15s will tell you to torque them then loosen them then torque them again this one actually just says to torque to 41 foot pounds wait a couple seconds then retorque and these are a metric bolt they're a 10 millimeter bolt with a 16 millimeter head and we're going to be torquing it now one thing i'll ask and it seems like younger people or apprentices make this mistake i'll ask them what size bolt something is if they're like hey josh i need a bolt because i have a personal bolt bin at work and they'll say oh it's a 13 millimeter it's not a 13 millimeter, folks. The bolt head is not the bolt size. The bolt shaft is the bolt size. So if someone asks you for the size of the bolt, they're asking you for the shaft size, not the head. So all the injectors have been installed here. Obviously, I showed you how to just do one. You just rinse and repeat. Now notice, this is a pushrod engine. I've got the center pushrods in, but not the outer ones. The center one, also I've got our oil pan off. It's best to leave the oil pan off until you get your valve cover on. I put on C13s the injector push rods in, but not the intake or exhaust push rods until after I put the rockers on, and I'll explain that why in a little bit. Now this was a platinum kit, so it came with new hold down bolts, and I cleaned all of the shafts for the rocker arms, and I cleaned all of the rocker arms themselves. Now the reason I'm putting oil between them here is because this is the last place to get oil when starting a new engine. Now I am gonna pressure prime this before starting it but it's a great idea to put oil between the rockers and on the shaft because that's one place that is hard to get oil to so what we're going to do, be doing is setting these on and then torquing them down and i keep them in order so these this was the number one set that came off and we're reusing the rockers this engine did get a new camshaft it got new cam bearings and lifters but the push rods and the rockers, well, they're getting reused because there's nothing wrong with them. I've never actually seen a broken C13 rocker arm. So really no reason to ever replace them unless maybe you had really bad coolant contamination and there was a lot of rust on the surfaces or in the uh, bearing areas. Now the bridges on C13s, you need to be very careful. 
I don't put oil on top of the bridges. I only put them on the valve stems because the rock arm can kind of grab it if it has oil on it and then pick it up and knock it out of place. So you'll see as I'm assembling and doing the overhead on this that I'll be checking the bridges. I try to rotate them out of position. If they rotate, that means they've come off the valve stem. And if they are off the valve stem, it can damage the valve, which is something you obviously don't want to do on a rebuilt engine. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to seat the rocker pedestals. They're kind of a pain because they have alignment dowels, and then you've also got your injector push rods on there. So you're trying to align those, and you're trying to get your bolts started all at the same time. It's kind of difficult. Mostly it's because of the push rods. Remember, the push rods are going to be pushing up because there's a preload on the injectors. Now, if you're wondering why I don't have the intake and exhaust push rods in, it's because it's very difficult to get all six set up. And I also don't like torquing bolts when you have a lot of push rods on because what that does is it's loading the bolts as you're torquing them. So once those hands start, then we can torque them. So you can see we have all of our rocker arm assemblies on now. And you can see I've got two different size, well, you can't say that they're different sizes, but I've got two different size sockets here. There's an 18 and a 19 millimeter. That's because the inner bolts are different size heads than the outer bolts. One's at 18, one's at 19. And the reason the outer ones are double-sided studs and the inner ones are just bolts is because the outer ones actually hold your Jake and IVA housing down. Now, Cap just says install bolts on here, but they're 12 millimeter bolts, and standard torque for that is 75 foot pounds. I've never seen any other specification for that, but that's what they are. So, we're going to torque the inner ones, both of them, and then go to the outer ones. Now, if you listen carefully, folks, you'll hear the Idaho Sasquatch mating call. At least I believe that's what that very unusual sound was, but I'm not going to film torquing all of these down we're going to get back to torquing the outer ones here so the outer ones like i said they all torque to 75 foot pounds and these were new bolts that came with the platinum kit or i shouldn't say bolts they're double-sided studs and once they're torqued we are ready to start our overhead obviously you want to torque all sets not just the forward ones and before we start our overhead though you have to put your push rods in and now the reason I put the push rods in after, and I do this on C7s also, is because, like I said, I don't like loading the torque, or the torque, I don't like torquing the bolts for the rocker pedestals while there's a bunch of push rods installed pushing down, and it, it just makes it trickier. Not only that, it's hard to get all six, because you've got four valve and two injector push rods lined up while you're trying to get four bolts started and two alignment dials for the pedestals. Now it's almost impossible to get the injector ones on once they're in, once the uh, rocker assemblies are installed. That's why I put the put two injector push rods in, but I install the other ones after. Now what I'm doing here is you can only install about half the push rods. You can install the ones that you're going to be doing the adjustment on. And since we're at TDC on one, I know that's intake exhaust on one, intake on two, exhaust on three, intake on four, exhaust on five. So that's what I'm doing here. So once, and I'm not going to film installing all of them, but I'm just showing you that's what I'm doing. So what I do is I just install them on there, put a, a small gap, and these are going to get adjusted immediately after this. So just setting it up for our overhead adjustment. Now this is my shorthand for doing the overhead. You can see my injector trim file numbers up there. If you look at the injector, which is ING, that's my shorthand. It's saying contact with the injector with the rocker arm. That's the arrow with the line plus 180 degrees additional, which would be a half turn preload, and then the nut torques to 41 foot-pounds. These do not have a height setting like the C15s do. Now, this is our intake and exhaust. 15 thousandths on the intake, 30 thousandths on the exhaust, and the lock nuts torque to 25 foot-pounds. Now, anyone familiar with C13 might be saying, whoa, Josh, that's wrong. It's 25 thousandths on the exhaust. Well, that's only on the older ones, the KCBs. The LEs actually have a 15 and 30 thousandths. The bottom section here is a little more confusing. So it's 24 thousandths for your IVAs, and those lock nuts torque to 41 foot-pounds, and then the 37 thousandths, which that's a big gap, but that is for the Jake settings, or compression brake technically, but everyone knows what I'm talking about when I say Jake's. And then the lock nut torque for the Jakes on this engine, 
12 foot pounds. So whenever I do an overhead, I always look and insist to verify nothing's changed, but that's how I write it down. Now when doing an overhead, I don't use wrenches. I actually use a torque adapter and usually an extension, and that's gonna change our torque, right? Wrong. Yeah, extensions don't change your torque numbers, folks, and also torque adapters do not, if using them properly, which means keeping them on a vertical plane with the drive head. So we've got our intake here, 15 thousandths, and we're doing intake on one, two, and four. And then exhaust we'll do on one, three, and five. And you can see I, I put little blue lines on the feeler gauge here. That's to differentiate it between the exhaust. It just makes it easier to see blue, no intake, and then red I'll put on the exhaust, then looking at the 15 and 30 thousandths. Now the way I do an adjustment is I always put my feeler gauge there, I run it over tight, so that's actually pushing the valve down, and I back it off, so that's actually pushing the valve down. Go back till it's loose, make sure our bridge is in place, feeler gauge, then I go finger tight, and that's it. Just torque the nut. That's how I always do overheads, and it's very consistent. Now, people always say, oh, your torque adapter changes your torque. It, it can, folks, if the head is at a not 90 degree plane from the, the head, if that makes any sense. Basically, the torque adapter needs to be directly to the right or the left of the drive head. It can't be above or below it, and your torque will remain the same. So that one's done. Now we're gonna do our exhaust. Now one thing is too, I see a lot of guys doing overheads and they leave the feeler gauges on. Whoa, whoa, almost fumbled that one. And they leave the feeler gauges on their set, you know, because the feeler gauge comes in a set of, you know, 20 different feeler gauges. Well, that's a pain in the butt. You can't really leave it under the rocker arm in that case. It's heavier, it's just more awkward. If you're doing overheads, especially lots, I mean, cats are universally 15 and 30 or 15 and 25. Take the individual ones out of your set. It just makes doing the overheads a ton easier. So, and I do the same procedure on the intake and exhaust. The injectors is much different though, because uh, that's a preload that's not, uh, it's not a light drag on the feeler gauge. So that's pretty much it. We did intake and exhaust on our number one cylinder here. And then we're gonna do intake on two which is this one. The intakes on these are the smaller rocker arms, or the shorter ones, I should say. Now the engine that evolved from the C12, they were much different. Their intakes were actually, how would I even say that? They were together. So it would be exhaust, injector, intake, intake, injector, exhaust was the pattern on those rocker shafts. So those would get a little more confusing, but the C13s are a lot easier to keep it. Uh, together. So same thing, light drag. And if you noticed, I wasn't even feeling the feeler gauge until after I torqued it because this will give you a very uniform procedure. All right, so once those are installed, you might be saying, why didn't you, why aren't we doing our Jakes? Why aren't we doing our IV8s? Well, it's almost impossible to do your injector adjustment with the Jake and IVAs installed on a C13. So the best way to do it is do your, your valves and your injector. Then when all those are done, you put your valve cover base on and then put your Jake slash IVA housings on. Now I was turning my torque wrench up because we're going to 41 foot pounds. And the reason we're going to 41 foot pounds is because we're gonna do our injectors now. I've done half the valves, done it on number one, two, three, four, and five. Now we're gonna do injectors on six, five, and three. You can do half your valves, half your injectors, and then you have to rotate it over. So let's start on number six. And this is much different than you might be used to if you're used to the C15s where you've got the height gauge. And what you have to do, like I said, it's a preload. It's 180 degrees, which is not the temperature. That's how much you have to rotate it past contact, which is kind of subjective, but as long as you're doing it uniformly, that's what matters. So what you do is you run it in till it's tight a couple turns, then you back it out to where the adjuster is loose. So we're backing it out after we turn it in. You can see it rotates freely, so it's loose. You're gonna go finger tight, and watch my hand. I hold it, so it's at the end of the T-handle, and 180 degrees is half a turn, right? 360 degrees would be a full turn. So we're gonna go 180. That is pretty much exactly 180. I mean, you could use a degree wheel, you could get really complicated here, but this is how I've always done it, and if 
Never had a problem with it. Like I said, the the fact that you're being more consistent is more important than, you know, measuring it and making sure that, you know, you're one or two degrees off. That, I would say, is less critical. But and then I'm just torquing, like I said. And if you notice here, like I said, I never use wrenches. I use these torque adapters and torque wrench. That's the way to do it if you if you have the tooling for it. You know, if you don't have torque adapters, whatever, it's fine, but it'll work. So then we're going to move on to number five here. And same procedure. So we're going to go tight. So we're tight there. We're going to go past that two full turns. Okay, maybe a little more than two full turns. Then we're going to go back till it's loose. It's loose. Contact. And then we're going to do 180 degrees. 180 degrees, and we're going to torque it, and that will make sure your injector does not get destroyed. Not only that, I've got a little surprise for you if you like the old Destruction of the Week intro, folks. This week's Destruction of the Week, we have two of them. First one is from the Southern Hemisphere. Hugh sent this ISX, and look at the rod bearings on that guy. Rod bearings look like that. Something happened, and that something was a broken crankshaft. Yeah, that's a uh, good old two-piece crankshaft. Our second Destruction of the Week is from Zach. Zach's a high schooler, actually, and he said this was his grandfather's John Deere combine engine. That's not what you want to see, folks. That's unfortunate, but uh, it seems to be a goat farm. Thank you to Hugh and Zach for sending those. So now that we have installed and adjusted our injectors and our valves, we can now install our valve cover base. Now, could you have the valve cover base on and do the adjustment? Yes, you could. You don't have to pull it. Obviously, we were doing the head, so we had this off. It gets in the way. It's a lot easier to do the adjustments with it out of the way. You don't have the wires. You have more room for getting your push rods in. Now, notice there's an O-ring there and an O-ring there. Make sure those are there on this model C13. On the older, the KCBs, they only have the rear large O-ring. They don't have the smaller thin one. That smaller thin one around the hole is actually for coolant for the ARD head or art head. Now, be careful when installing this because it's very easy to get, let's say, an injector connector or a J connector under the base and break it. Not the base, that you're not going to break the base. It would break the connector. And then you would have to either repair or replace the injector harness, which is a pain in the butt. This one, we were reusing the harness. So if can be, don't want to damage anything. And did not damage it here because I was careful. And now that's your IVA oil pressure sensor. That's the only oil, oil pressure sensor or sensor that CAT has under the valve cover on these truck engines that I know of at least. So we've got our cleaned injector and IVA housing here. Now all C13s have IVAs. Now notice that O-ring. That O-ring is what feeds oil to the IVA and Jake housing. If you have to do an IVA oil pressure sensor, do it now. So one thing to check is roll this guy over. Make sure that o the old O-ring is not still on there because you don't want to double stack those O-rings. Now the i all like i said all c15 or c15 c13s have ivas not all of them have jakes the housings are pretty much the same though other than the ones that don't have jakes don't have the adjustments or the solenoid for them but they're all going to have basically the same looking housing and the installation procedure is going to be the same this is your j connector if it has jakes it's going to have this connector if it doesn't you're not going to have it this one's been patched before. You can see there's heat shrink and stuff there. That's a CAT approved repair. Not the best um, design, I would say, but you know what? It beats changing the whole harness every time. So installed all the bolts. They torque to 21 foot pounds, and that's all ready to go for the uh, the uh, valve cover base here. Not going to show you torquing those bolts. What I am going to show you though is torquing the Jake housing. So, like I said, remember, double-sided studs, and then the outer side has these big uh, Allen wrench-style hex bolts. Torque to 75 foot-pounds also. Always torque the two nuts that are on the rocker shaft first, and then I go to the hex ones. Now, are these fasteners reusable? 
yes, they are. I've reused them lots of times, and they don't know if I've ever seen one broken, but the Platinum kits usually come with new the shafts, the double-sided shafts for the rocker up there. They don't give you all the new bolts, but certain things on the C13 are supposed to be replaced, like the head bolts and the injector hole nut bolts. Not necessarily the rocker shaft bolts, though. But it's better to replace them if they're in the kit. I put the new ones on, obviously. The customer's paying for them. These outer ones, they torque are the same. 75 foot-pounds. And it's a 10 millimeter uh, Allen style socket. So, once these are installed, now you can't put these on though before you put the valve cover base because they get oil fed from the valve cover base. So it has to go rocker arms, then valve cover base, then Jake housing. You can see all of our harnesses have been put on. What I'm doing here is just checking the bridges. You can see how hard it would have been to adjust the injectors with these on it's it's almost impossible so we've got our now it's a pain in the butt 37,000 setting on the jakes is a pain because there's not a 37,000 feeler gauge at least not one that i know of now probably people in the comments are going to say some company in the top of the himalaya is making them but what i'm using is an 18 and a 19,000 stacked i don't like doing that i don't like stacked feeler gauges it's a pain in the butt I do have feeler gauges up to 35 thousandths, but anything over that I do not have. So the other one, which is our IVA, which we're doing here, and you measure your IVA between not the bridge, but actually on top of the rock arm and the plunger. And this is 24 thousandths for the IVA. Now IVAs tend to loosen when you tighten the nut. So what I do is I run it till it's not a light drag. I run it till it's very firm way past light drag. Then what I do is when I torque it, and this torques the 41 foot-pounds, when I torque it, it will become a light drag. I don't know why the IVAs are like this, but they are. Anyone that's done them, I show them and they're like, I don't believe that. And then I show them and they're like, oh, yep, that makes sense. So the jakes don't do that, the valves don't do that, but yeah, the IVAs will. Now it's a light drag. It was a heavy drag before, now it's a light drag. So that one's good to go. So the next is the jake setting. So we were doing the IVA on number three there. You do the IVAs or the Jakes the same time you would have done the intake or the exhaust valve for the same cylinder. So let's say if we were on TDC one, we would have done the IVA on one because we were doing the uh, intake valve on one. And the IVA is an intake valve actuator, if that makes sense. Some people might be speaking Greek here, but that's what we got. So I got my inch pound torque wrench because remember this only torque to 12 foot pounds. So what we're gonna do, 37 thousandths. I like to run it back. And this one, same thing. You're not measuring under the rocker arm, you're measuring on top of the rocker arm and the plunger, the Jake plunger. So we've got our stacked 18 and 19 thousandths here, which makes 37. We're gonna run it to a light drag. Hopefully right there. Yep. Yeah, that's light drag. And that there is some sub subjectivity, folks, to light drag. I'm not going to lie, but, you know, be consistent. Make sure one's not a heavy drag, one's not a light. And I want to torque it. Like I said, no wrenches, so I pretty much always do it. Not how I always did it, but that's how I always do it now. So that's, you just rinse and repeat, folks, and that's how you get your overhead all assembled there. Then all you really got to do is put your valve cover on, which is pretty simple. And every time I see my thumbs up in my video, I think of this. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.